What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jack and Potato, and what did you think of the new intro? I love it. Doritos Crash Course 2 came out, and I was just like, perfect opportunity, revamping my channel, time to revamp the intro, so I decided to. I went with a bit of a Irish rock theme, even though I'm not really Irish, I'm technically British, but we in Northern Ireland can say we're both Irish and British, so it's kind of cool in that way. Also on the screen now you should be able to see the new avatar, the new guy, all designed by me with the original in mind the entire time. I didn't want to use it for too long, again for like copyright stuff, so I decided to make my own and there he is, literally I made him myself. I am really proud of him. I can't be more proud with the introduction, the new avatar and the background and everything. It's just going really well. I thought I would give my channel a complete revamp for the 500th view, just to show that I am serious about this and I want a good background and a good introduction and a good avatar and just not the MIU crappy ones that I had beforehand. And with that done, let's get into the topic that I have. I've started playing Nino Kuni again. If you watch my channel regularly, you should notice that I mention Nino Kuni a lot in my gameplays and compare it to a lot of things. Because it's a game which I literally... This is really sad. I'm... I have no bar in saying this, but it's quite sad. I have literally fallen in love with Nino Kuni. Not like that whole love love that I want to marry the game or that sad love where I'm in love with the game and I don't want to stop playing and stuff. But the gameplay itself, the game is just amazing for me. And every time I play it, I'm just like, why do I not play this more? Why do I not complete this game? Why am I not putting more time into this game? And it's just so amazing. And so with that in mind, my question for you is, when was the last time you fell in love with a game? When was the last time you played a game and every time you went to it, you just were like, yes, I want to play this game. Every time you turned on your console, they say, yep, I know what I'm playing today. Just loving that in there, just getting it in and I want to experience this as much as I can. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a complete nut job when it comes to Nino Kune or any of my games. I do have a life, I do have a girlfriend, I have a job, so I play them when I can. But when I do play these games, I play them for hours. played Nino Kune yesterday for about three hours yesterday and I barely even got past the story section that I'm on. In Nino Kune, there's like ten cities. And I think I'm only at, like, the second one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I've only got two out of the three characters that you find, and I don't think you find the next one for another five hours of gameplay. It is madness. But going back to my other games and looking at them, I just realised that when I play a game, I actually do play a game. When I enjoy it, I enjoy playing it, so I want to play it as much as I can. When I got Bioshock Infinite, that game was just immense, so I wanted to play it again and again and again. And I wanted to go back and do a Let's Play of it during the summer once I finish my job at the end of May. And looking at my other games, I have a game called Tales of Vesperia. I played the demo for that, maybe when it first came out? The first game, it came out the same year the Xbox came out. It wasn't a launch title, but it was kind of mid the first year of the Xbox. I played the demo for that, and I couldn't beat the boss in the game. I love the gameplay, I love the art style, I love the music. I'm a bit of an anime fan, so all that comes into my games as well. If I see a game and it has like an anime theme, and it's an RPG sort of game, I will probably rent that game. If not, watch videos of it and buy it. <laughs> but Tales of Vesperia, I played that, and I got addicted to it. I bought it a what, last year. Year, and I've got, I got addicted to it for a long time and I just enjoy playing it so much. Not a bad type of addicted. Far Cry 3, when I first seen that, I really wanted to play it. And when I got it, I played it and played it and played it. Just other games started coming out and I haven't really completed it. Slash played it since. But thinking back even on my childhood, when I first had the PS2, I loved my games. I loved every game that I had. Actually, to this day, I still consider Ratchet & Clank, the Jack series, and the Sly Cooper series some of the best games I have ever played in my life, ever. They are just so fun, they are so polished, and they're just so well designed. I used to complete the end games 100%. I have all the orbs in Jack and Dexter, 1, 2, and 3. I have all the bottles and stuff from Sly Cooper. I have all the mystery things from Ratchet and Clank. Them games were just so amazing that I just wanted to play them more and more and more. And I don't know what's happened to games recently, but fewer and fewer games are actually holding that sort of feeling for me. Black Ops 2 and the Call of Duty series, the first Call of Duty series I was 
hooked on that game. That was a brilliant game, and I was hooked on it the same way that I'm hooked on Nino Kune or Tales of Vesperia now. But it's just over the years, it's become staler and staler and staler. And then other games are actually kind of starting to follow that same suit. If you ever watch the guy called Jim Sterling, he's on the Escapist website. I'll put a link in the description for you all. He talks about stuff like this. And he talked about how games are actually trying to beat Call of Duty. Games now don't want to be good. They want to be the next COD killer. Even if they're not a first person shooter game, they want to beat COD. Dead Space is the best example of that that I can give you. The first two Dead Spaces were horror games. They were literally horror games. The first Dead Space, I flipped me, I couldn't play it after a while. I got that freaked out with it. I hate horror films. This is a little addition to that. But I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Dead Space 3, it became an action game. There was nothing scary about it, there was nothing walking down a dark corridor and thinking, right, where is something going to pop? I know, goodness, there it is! Um, something like that. There was none of that in Dead Space 3. It was all just action, it was all just, oh, I'm going to crawl out of the ground and crawl at you and scream in front of your face. I'm not going to come out from behind you, I'm going to come out in front of you. And I don't get it. I don't get why games feel that they have to be Call of Duty. Games don't have to be like Call of Duty. They only want to be like Call of Duty because they want your money. They feel that if they are like Call of Duty, if they can beat Call of Duty, then they will get your money and a lot of it. Instead of making a game for the sake of making a game, they're making the game for the sake of trying to beat Call of Duty. They're not trying to make it individual or unique. They're just trying to make it so that it beats Call of Duty and get more of your money. And if that's the way games keep going, it's going to be really sad for us as gamers and also as consumers because we're going to be spending our money on these horrible games. Alien Colonial Marines is another good example of that. That are not well polished. They're only shoved out just for the sake of getting shoved out. They're not polished. They're not ready. They're not unique, they're just crap, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And it's sad to see that games are going in this way. But anyway guys, thanks for listening. I have a wee question actually for some of you guys out there. I'm thinking of doing a challenge series. Like, not for me, but for people subscribed to my channel. Okay? What this challenge is going to be is that once a month I set a challenge on my channel. You guys then can take it up. You then have a month to get the video to me and at the end of the month there's no there's no money prize, there's no physical prize because since I'm not earning off my channel yet I can't do that type of thing. But what I can do is I'm planning on making a little avatar with a belt like a W you know the WWE champion belt around his face where you can only see his eyes and stuff. And then the winner of that month gets that little character and is allowed to put it somewhere on their video or something. I don't know. I promise you it's not for boosting my own channel's views or nothing. It's literally just a fun thing I wanted to do with my subs. Because when I first started this channel, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get a really good subscriber base where I can interact and have fun with. So if you think that's a good idea, say in the comment section below. There's no actual money prize. There's no physical prize. It's just for a bit of fun, really. But anyway, guys, if you like the idea, put it in the comments below. If you like the video, click like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, if you click the little jacket potato icon up in the top right. Now he used to be in the... No, he's top left. He used to be in the top right, but now he's in the top left. Click him, and he will subscribe you to my channel. But as always, guys, my name is Jacket Potato. I am a Christian, and I will see you all next time.